So I frequently uh, talk about coordination and shooting and how one of the big problems that I see with uh, players who struggle to shoot is a lack of coordination um, in their shots, uh, which many times is simply looked at as a flaw in their technique. Uh, but I often think that it goes beyond just their technique and to a more general problem with coordination. Um, so then the question is, what is coordination? So coordination, in the easiest way to explain is, is it's the... Um, general ability to use uh, different body parts together to move efficiently and effectively. Um, so coordination, when, it's one of those things that uh, you, know, you, you can see it. Um, so when you see a Kevin Durant or a Steph Curry uh, shoot the ball or you see Roger Federer hit a tennis ball, uh, you know, these are movements that look graceful, they look smooth, um, they look efficient. Uh, and so they're coordinated. Um, oftentimes, other athletes will maybe be able to perform nearly as well, but they don't look nearly as smooth or efficient uh, as they perform the skill. So they, they look like they're really having to put a lot of effort into hitting a tennis ball or into shooting a basketball, something of that nature. Um, and so often, it's a matter of... Uh, in some cases, the inability to sum the forces of the body into kind of one movement. Um, and so there's some form of, you know, leakage somewhere in the system. Uh, so again, it's, it's a little hard to explain, um, but it's something that you can see. And so when I see players who struggle to shoot, sometimes I see uh, problems with coordination. And the big problem that I see in terms of coordination with with players is the inability to coordinate their upper and lower bodies um, so you know there are seven elements that make up coordination um, and the ones to me that are most um, you know important in terms of shooting are rhythm uh, balance uh, especially and then the synchronization of movement so and that's what I see is the upper and the lower body aren't working together. They're not synchronized. And so therefore there's uh, you know, some leak in the force that they're uh, generating from their feet and their lower body. They're not able to impart that force on the ball. Um, so then the question becomes, how do you train um, or how do you develop this coordination? Well, uh, Coordination develops as as we progress it from you know from children all the way uh, adolescence and then into adulthood. Uh, you know we used to develop coordination through physical education courses and and just general playing and being exposed to a lot of different movements. Um, you know and some people I know I know I have friends that that believe that some issues with coordination stem all the way to the way that we. Uh, the parents deal with or raise uh, young, young children, babies um, and toddlers and how they're, uh, I guess they spend more time in cribs than, than they used to and they don't spend as much time crawling and um, scooting and rolling um, and things of that nature. And I know there are some people that uh, attribute some developmental uh, issues to the lack of these, uh, to lack of exposure to these general movements uh, as toddlers. Um, I'm not a developmental psychologist. I don't know uh, how accurate that is, but I do know that some people have that belief. Um, in terms of shooting, um, and especially the lack of synchronization and movement, uh, three things that I tend to like. One, the easiest, I think, is if you work on uh, just jumping. Um, so if you can really develop jumping, and I know some people will say, well, that's a simple skill. Anybody can jump. Um, but if you can really jump, um, and especially if you can jump and then raise your hands overhead as you're jumping in one kind of graceful, smooth movement, uh, that's kind of what you're doing when you're shooting a ball. Um, to really be able to, uh, you know, increase the athlete's ability to feel um, the synchronization or the summation of forces, uh, using some kind of um, object, uh, you know, I, I oftentimes will have players use a medicine ball. 
And so we're not really shooting a medicine ball, but we're kind of throwing a medicine ball up as high as we can um, in a motion similar to shooting uh, because that, while you may be able to shoot a basketball because it's not very heavy, uh, you know, without some of your forces and without a fully coordinated movement, it's difficult to throw a medicine ball high enough um, or with great height um, without a good summation of forces. So if your upper body, or sorry, if your lower body extends and your uh, upper body still flex forward and then you come up and so basically you're just throwing it with your upper body, you're not going to get the ball as high as if you're able to generate the force through your legs and then impart that force all the way through your body and then up through your hands as you release the ball. So that's one, one tactic that I've used to try to get players to understand um, or feel how to uh, coordinate their upper and lower bodies. Along the same lines, I think some of the more coordinated athletes that I've worked with are those who have exposure to weightlifting at young ages. Um, and specifically to Olympic lifting, so and more or less to cleans. Because um, cleans really do a good job of teaching what the triple extension is um, and also uh, using your arms with that motion and having to, again, lift a weight. So the weight um, helps to um, self-correct in a way, uh, the coordination, because you're not going to be able to lift the weight uh, with poor technique. Uh, along the same lines, uh, probably my favorite exercise in the weight room to use for this idea um, is a push press or a push jerk because it's very similar um, in terms of the rhythm um, and the pushing and the summation of forces uh, to shooting a basketball. Um, you know, obviously the weight's different um, and so there's, you know, some, some differences between the two movements. Um, but the general principles of the dip and the drive are going to be similar um, when shooting and then, you know, doing a push press. So these are a couple of the things that I've used um, when, I, when I work with players or, you know, teach players that have this kind of problem. Um, you know, and then, it, then, you know, there could be other issues with coordination that might need, uh, you know, some other kind of uh, intervention. So, uh, you know, players who lack a little bit bit of rhythm, you know, maybe they need to spend more time doing something as simple as jumping rope, or maybe they need some exercises like skipping and hopping that could develop a little bit of rhythm. Uh, maybe they simply need to, you know, take dance classes to, to develop a little bit more rhythm uh, in their bodies. So, um, but I, I do think that, uh, you know, coordination precedes control, control precedes skill. So if we're trying to take players who lack some form of coordination and make them into great skilled players, we're skipping steps. Um, and so we want to make sure that we uh, develop the coordination in our young children first, and then ultimately they're going to be more skilled because they have a greater foundation of movements um, and a greater foundation um, of physical literacy from which they can draw on when they need to perform a specific skill, uh, such as shooting a basketball.